2019, notice of this meeting was mailed to the press and the current of Egg Harbor Township. Notice was also delivered that day to the Egg Harbor Township clerk and posted on a bulletin board in Township Hall. Can you please raise for the flags? Followed by a moment of silence for, how about you now? Pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Like to have a moment of silence for the student that was from the high school that was lost uh, in an automobile accident. Uh, that would be Brian Serrano. Let's take this time to remember him and uh, thoughts and prayers to his family. Thank you. At this time, I will report okay, sir, the election results. <clears throat> Mr. Louis Delabarca for a three year term with votes 4374. Mrs. Marita Sullivan for a three year term with votes of 4543. Mr. Ray Ellis for a three year term with votes of 4446. And our two year term of Mr. Michael Price. Um, a one year term actually. One year term, Mr. Price, for 3376. At this time, can you please join me at the uh, floor? Thank you. your right hand, sorry. I, please state your name. I'm Michael Price. Solemnly. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. And to the governments established in the United States. And to the governments established in the United States. And this state. And this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of people. So help me God. So help me God. I, please state your name. I am Marisa Sullivan. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I possess the qualifications. That I possess the qualifications. Prescribed by law. Prescribed by law. For the office of member. For the office of member. Of a board of education. Of a board of education. And that I am not disqualified. And I am not disqualified. As a voter. As a voter. Pursuant to. Pursuant to. RS. RS. 19. 4-1. 4-1. Nor disqualified. Nor disqualified. Due to conviction of a crime. Due to conviction of a crime. Or offense listed, or offense offense listed. listed. in NJS, in the NJS 18A, 18A 12-1. 12-1. And that I will faithfully, and that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform, perform all the duties, all the duties of that office, of that office to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. ability. So help me God. So help me God. This time I'll take roll call of the entire board. Mrs. Bird? Present. Mr. Castellano? Here. Mr. Delabarca? Here. Mr. Ellis? Here. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Here. Mr. Price? Here. Mrs. Sullivan? Here. Mrs. Summer? Here. And Mrs. Salagi? Here. Thank you. 
At this time, I will ask for a motion to approve an appointment of a board president. At this time, board members, if you would like to nominate a board member, just please state the name. I would like to nominate Pete Castellano for board president. I would like to nominate Mr. Della Barca. Over this last year, during my time on this board, he has represented the entire board and just not one person or one idea. And he represents us on multiple levels, including national, state, and local. And he has always done so in a respectful and nonpartisan way. And for those reasons, I'd like to nominate him as president for 2020. Thank you, Mr. Slavi. Any other nominations for president? At this time, I'll take a roll call vote. Please state the name of the candidate you wish to proceed as a nomination for president. Mrs. Bird. Mr. Castellano. Mr. Castellano. Vote for myself, Mr. Castellano. Mr. Della Barca. Vote for myself, Lou Della Barca. Mr. Ellis. Vote for Lou Della Barca. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. P. Castellano. Mr. Price. Mr. Castellano. Mrs. Sullivan. Mr. Del Barca. Mrs. Summer. Mr. Castellano. And Mrs. Salagi. Mr. Del Barca. Thank you, Mr. Castellano. You have enough votes. Uh, you are now being um, <laughs> approved to be appointed as a president for the 2020 year. You come take the seat. I'll stay here. You'll stay there? Yeah, I'll stay here. Tonight. Would you like the agenda to continue the meeting or would you like me to continue? Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll go ahead from here. Go for it. Yep. Uh, at, at this point, I'd like to uh, ask for nominations for vice president, please. I'd like to nominate Marita Sullivan. I'd like to nominate Christy Bird. Any other nominations? Seeing none, may we have Excuse a... Excuse me, Mr. Castellano. Yes. I'd like to turn down that nomination and nominate uh, Lou Della Barca. Any further nomination? Can we have a roll call vote, please? Mrs. Bird. I humbly vote for myself. Mr. Castellano. I vote for Mrs. Bird. Mr. Della Barca. For myself, please. Mr. Ellis. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd. Mrs. Bird. Mr. Price. Mrs. Bird. Mrs. Sullivan. Mr. Del Barca. Mrs. Summer. Mrs. Bird. And Mrs. Salagi. Mr. Del Barca. Congratulations, Mrs. Bird, Vice President. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move into um, uh, number 9.1 and uh, 9.2. 9.1 is to adopt our existing board policies and bylaws. 9.2 is our annual board calendar, uh, which is in your agenda. I just want to say a quick word uh, on the board calendar. Um, I see we do have some dedicated budget meetings. We may find it necessary to add some as we get closer to budget time. Uh, also, uh, in July and August, each of those months has three meetings each, and if there's any way we can condense and, uh, uh, you know, give us uh, all a little bit of a breather in the summertime, I'm sure we'll all uh, welcome that and try to do so. So with that, I'll ask for a um, motion for 9.1 and 9.2, please. Motion. Second. Roll call, please. Any discussion for on clarification, that? the motion is as it stands? Yes. And could be yes. Later. Okay, it's just discussion. Okay. Yeah. Any discussion on 9.1 and 9.2? Seeing none, roll call, please. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. And Mrs. Salagi? Yes. Now I'd like to ask for a motion on our reappointments 10.1 through 10.7. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Second. So moved. 
Marita, Marita is the second. Do we have any discussion on our reappointments? Seeing none, may we have a roll call on reappointments? Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Salagi? Yes. May I now have uh, a motion for 11.1 and 11.2, designation of newspapers and uh, depositories of district funds, please. Motion. Second. Any discussion on our designations? <coughs> Sorry, I thought I hit it. Um, I'm hoping up in the next, uh, in the upcoming year, that we're able to utilize the current a little bit more to highlight all the awesome things that are happening in our district. I, I agree. I agree. I noticed that uh, the current is getting back into the news business somewhat. So, yeah, I agree. Um, so, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Mrs. Bird? Yes. Mr. Castellano? Yes. Mr. Della Barca? Yes. Mr. Ellis? Yes. Mrs. Gilbert Floyd? Yes. Mr. Price? Yes. Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. Mrs. Summer? Yes. Mrs. Shalazi? Yes. Uh, next, we're into our uh, discussion items. The first is 12.1. Uh, discussing uh, our bylaws and code of ethics. I will turn that over to uh, Mrs. Elko. Thank you. Every year at reorganization, we review the um, code of ethics for school board members. I know throughout the year we've received numerous trainings through school boards at our county meetings. Um, but this time specifically, we take a moment to review the code of ethics. Just to highlight them, the first one, is that you will uphold and enforce all laws, rules, and regulations through the state, and desired changes should be brought about only through legal and ethical procedures. The second one is that you're going to make educational decisions in the educational decisions in the educational welfare of children and will seek to develop and maintain public schools which meet the individual needs of all children, regardless of their ability, race, creed, sex, or social standing. The third one is I will confine my board action to policy making, planning, and appraisal, and I will help to frame policies and plans only after the board has consulted those who will be affected by them. The fourth one, I will carry out my responsibility not to administer the schools, but together with my fellow board members see that they are well run. The fifth one, I will recognize that authority rests with the Board of Education and will make no personal promises nor take any private action which may compromise the board. The sixth one, I will refuse to surrender my independent judgment to special interest or partisan political groups or to use the school for personal gain or for the gain of friends. The seventh one, I will hold confidential all matters pertaining to the school, which if disclosed would needlessly injure individuals or the schools. But in all other manners, I will provide accurate information and in concert with my fellow board members, interpret to the staff the aspirations of the community for its schools. Number eight, I will vote to appoint the best qualified personnel available after consideration of the recommendation of the chief school administrator. Number nine, I will support and protect school personnel in proper performance of their duties. And number 10, I will refer all complaints to the chief school administrator and will act on such complaints at public meetings only after failure of an administrator um, solution is provided. Every year, you, we are going to sign the code of ethics, so Chandra, I don't know if you passed that out or not. Okay, so sign that, put it back for our records. In addition, just as a reminder, you have to do your mandated training. You also have to fill out your mandated uh, disclosure forms as well. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Mrs. Elko. Um, so we now have, uh, in, in terms of our um, reps and, and committees. Uh, I, it's not my intention to um, form committees tonight. I know it is the same board. Um, 
but I would like to give everyone the opportunity um, to think about what committees you'd like to serve on. If you want to continue on your current committees, that's fine. Um, uh, we, we can have up to four members on a committee. Uh, you know, in, in the past, uh, the board president has sat in on a lot of them, but I'm very open to having a, a four-person committee if someone expresses an interest in, in serving on more than one committee. Um, so what I would ask is that everyone please send me an email by close of business Friday um, with your preference. If you want to stay the same, just say same, whatever you'd like to do. And Mrs. Bird and I will look at that. Uh, over the weekend, we'll do our best to have everyone serve where they'd like, and uh, we'll we'll have a list then come out Monday uh, in time for our meeting. With our committee meetings are Tuesday. Our committee night is Tuesday. And also, if I could ask uh, Chandra, I'm going to put you to work here a little bit. We never got a complete roster last year. We have eight of nine board members. So if we could just update our roster with all nine board members and their contacts and so then on Monday we could send out a committee list as well as a roster so everyone has that and we're ready to go for um, Tuesday Tuesday night's committee meetings. Um, the next thing, um, <clears throat> two quick things before we open for public comment. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to ask uh, any of our newly um, elected and sworn in board members if they'd like to say a few words if you have uh, or and or if you have family here that you'd like to introduce uh, please feel free anyone um, I just would like to thank everybody that supported me during the campaign it was a really close run uh, it was very competitive and I'm just glad that the that Diego Harbor Township supported me and um, gave me a vote of confidence, so thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Yes, I would again like to thank everybody that showed their confidence in me and supported me during the last election. And uh, I'm proud to serve again. And um, I won't let you down. So appreciate it. Thanks for coming out tonight. Uh, will my family in the front row stand up, please? <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> uh, I'd like to thank uh, each and every one for allowing me the opportunity to continue to serve, even though I didn't get to run a meeting. You, you oh, I, I was scared in the way, Lou, but you came to every meeting. <laughs> And Mr. President, I, I'd also like to thank the community for the support, not only this year, but over the last almost 10 years of my service on this board. Uh, I'm going to speak for the heart for a minute, so I hope it doesn't upset too many people. I'm very saddened by the board and the situation we're in and has been in for a while. Uh, the Board of Education are supposed to be nonpartisan, and I don't think this is the truth with this particular Board of Education at this Amen. time. Um, and if you look at number six on our ethics, it certainly stands out as something of a concern. I've been honored by my fellow board members to serve as vice president and president for two particular terms. Uh, and I appreciate every, their support during the entire time that I have served in a leadership capacity. Uh, we have a lot to do again in this upcoming year, and I'm looking forward to working with all the board members in uh, completing, hopefully, our full day kindergarten goal uh, for the next September, that would be something I certainly, in my professional career over uh, over 50 years, have supported having a full day kindergarten here in Carpet Township. Uh, as many of you know, I've been involved with this particular township since 1950, and I actually had five years, 1970, since I've actually had five years before that up in Middletown Township. So it's actually almost 55 years that I've been involved in education. Of course, I started when I was 10, but that's an old joke. Um, <laughs> Uh, I've tried to treat each board member in a positive, friendly, uh, nonpartisan, respectful way over my entire, well, my entire career in the township. When I was, was a principal in the town, I served as a teacher, a principal, and of course a board member during my time. And I'm, I, I think I'm a proven leader. Uh, I have been president of so many organizations I lost track. 
by uh, big ones were the State Principals and Supervisors Association, which really was a true honor. And on a national level, I also served on a National Elementary Principals Association as a Board of Directors member, being elected by the states of Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. So it's truly been an honor to have served nationally. Uh, and every time I went to a national meeting, I used to tell all the superintendents I worked with in my career, what do you think I talked about? A, Harbor Township School District. What a wonderful place this is to live, and what a great school district we've had over, I think, the entire, I've seen the growth of the town in 50 years, but over all those years, the outstanding teachers we have, outstanding administrators, and I'm so very proud to be a part of it. I wish Mr. Castellano and Mrs. Bird all the best this year. I look forward to working with them and all the board members, and we have a lot to do, and let's go on and do the work. Thank you. Yes, any other of our, that, that's all of our, no, any other board members? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to begin by congratulating the newly elected board members. Congratulations. Uh, I know it's stressful running for public office, um, so you're in your seat now, and I'm sure you're, you're relieved and ready to serve. And congratulations to our new uh, Board of Education officers, um, Mr. Castellano and Mrs. Burke. Look forward to working uh, with you. Um, we're a team, administration and the Board of Education, and we will work on continuing with our mission of embrace, engage, and educate. We all sit up here to serve the students of Egg Harbor Township, and we have our district learning goals that we are focusing on, and we are all supportive of student uh, improving student achievement, um, looking at literacy for all students, stream education, social emotional learning focus, as well as creating community partnerships and a positive and a loving climate and culture in all of our schools. So um, we will work together to continue on that mission. There's a lot of work to do now that we begin our budgeting season and we will keep in mind our strategic plan which is, fra the fra which is framed around those district learning goals. So um, congratulations again. And with all that said, I was wondering if the board was interested in a uh, midwinter retreat as we have done in the past um, to regroup, refocus, and um, you know, have healthy discussions. And Mr. Castellano, I asked you for one if you're interested, two for a date for that retreat. Okay. Um, do you have Do you have suggestions? Uh, we um, in the past, I know, a few years past, we 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 did some Saturdays. I know board members had a preference to have their weekends free and we kind of moved to uh, I believe Friday nights um, so I, I guess what is what is the, the, the pleasure of the board do we want to look for a Saturday again or do we want to we want to stay with the, the Friday night as we did well we did look at it um, Tuesday night this Tuesday night or next Tuesday night the 14th which is a committee night um, but I look at the folks who were involved in the committees, is there, or are there topics for those committees? Are you ready to have a meeting can, next Tuesday night? Can, so I, I guess my question is going back to, um, so are you, are you making a suggestion that maybe we use our committee night as the retreat night? Okay. Well, I Just guess. thrown it out for discussion for you to consider. So yes. I'm gonna ask administration if you have things for us to to look at, I know policy needs to look at uh, a, n a number of things. Our uh, school lunch policy is one of them, but I'm going to ask you if you guys have things for us to look at. I'm just putting this out as a suggestion. If I'm saying, when do, when do we have to pick a date by? Because we could, since we have to email uh, Mr. Castellano by Friday with. Um, the committee information, um, would it make sense for everybody to email with a, a date or a date that would be a preference? Just a suggestion. Or do we have to have it? Well, I think if, if you're looking to have the meeting on the 14th, we'd want to know as soon as possible, correct? Yes, we'd have to advertise the meeting right. and comply with that, so I think we would need to know before Friday. 
I like the idea of doing it on the 14th because it's a scheduled day we already have planned and I think that um, we can talk about committees and strengths and weaknesses and things like that as part of our retreat, making sure everyone, um, we have our norms set and things like, things like that. Norms are very important. Um, so do we see, a, do, uh, am I seeing a consensus for straw, straw poll that we'll use Tuesday night? Yes, I would agree with that. Mr. Castle, and I'd like to know if the administration is uh, ready to have uh, committee meetings. I, yeah, I, I, had, I, mean, I had asked that. Right, so okay. are all of the uh, I'm going to turn to the three facilitators uh, for policy. Mr. Santilli, do you have anything um, on your, in your queue? So there's always things in the queue for policy. However, um, I think that we'd be fine if, if the retreat was going to be on Tuesday night. We would, we'd be fine to move things to the... Uh, to February. Mr. Davis for curriculum? We would be okay pushing it to February as well. Ms. Anaya, finance operations? For finance, the budget is done by the full board and I do have facility updates, but Mr. Burnett is planning to present in January to the full board so we can kind of take care of it then. I think we'll be okay. And personnel, we would be handling an executive on the 21st. Then I'm fine with Tuesday. Okay, I see a consensus here. So we'll advertise for uh, Tuesday evening, um, 6 o'clock. Okay, by everyone at the high school. Early, early start. I just want to remind everybody I will not be there, but you don't need me for the retreat. <laughs> okay. All right, before, so we have that taken care of, so um, then uh, I'll be looking for emails on committees. Um, and uh, just a couple of quick remarks from me. First of all, uh, we suffered uh, a very heavy loss of a student, and uh, our thoughts and prayers are for him and with him and his family. Um, I'd like to thank members of the board who put their trust in me again to serve as president. I'm very honored. Uh, I work very hard at this. I'm the longest serving board member and uh, I take this very, very seriously. We have a lot of work to do in 2020. We have a lot of things to get done. And uh, as long as we keep our focus on students, I think we're going to be just fine. Uh, with that, I thank you, and uh, Mrs. Bird, if you have anything, or we'll, we'll go ahead and open up to public after you're finished. Just to piggyback, thank you to everyone. Um, I am very humbled by this uh, opportunity, and I'm going to work very hard. I know I'm newer, um, but I think I've proven that I throw myself into it, and I work really hard, and um, as we all do, and I think we all bring uh, great things to the table and I think that we're going to we can work together wonderfully and we're all different but that's what makes this work because we have different perspectives and we bring different things you know and I think all of us you would not do this job if we didn't put kids first because it is kind of thankless up here and I wanted to add to Mr. Delabarco, I um, have so much respect for you. And this last year, I've gotten to know you on a personal level. And every time we've communicated, I have um, learned from you and appreciate you as a person and appreciated how you, um, how you love education and you love EHT. And I, I hope that you read my email, and I hope that you understand that um, I want to continue working with you and have a positive relationship with you. And so, thank you. Um, being that we do have a lot of work to do in 2020, um, I just wanted to go out there for the public to know that, um, as far as with the policy committee, um, 
there was a lot of talk in reference to our citizens advisory committee which is um, what we don't want to do we don't want to have something on paper but not actually application or actually happening so um, just stay tuned for more information in reference to our citizens advisory committee to get that going and rolling and um, in the efforts of transparency and working together so since you brought that up about the advisory committee is it possible um, in the past years we've had policy be open to the public policy meeting committee meeting so that would start handling it right away if we make the policy committee open to the public again that's the way it was in prior years how many years ago two years ago two years ago what about um no, this past year in curriculum no curriculum. budget let me finance. No, it's oh, okay. All right. So the retreat, maybe. That's how you want to. But then the other. When we find out who's on the committee, too. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, those are good topics to talk about mm -hmm. at our retreat. What our committees will look like. Um, what would be, you know, so a advisory committee needs a purpose. Mm -hmm. So that that would be another topic. Yep. Um, and so I do thank you, Mrs. Gilbert Floyd, for reminding me of that. Uh, we do have that tool at our disposal Absolutely. to use. Uh, with that, I'm going to open up to public comment. Three minutes, please, on any topic that you'd like. Uh, remember that the board cannot discuss personnel or litigation. And uh, if we have complex questions, we may have to have our administrators get back to you. Can I speak now? Yes. Okay. Carl Mason, 3057 Fernwood Avenue, Ake Arbor Township. First, I would like to tell Mr. Ellis, thank you again for it be, being one of the few that are uh, voting for uh, class ranking not go away. I want to apologize to the uh, oh man, superintendent for of schools thinking that I could reach her immediately and wouldn't have to leave a, a voicemail and wait to be called back. I just thought that was uh, the way it was supposed to mean and I think that the same thing with the uh, business administrator. I want to apologize that I thought she would be available and got the same message and, and, and we get, uh, get called back. And I want to apologize. Is it Miss Zero? I called Miss Zero and got the same. Oh, 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 I get it. Op O oh, for, I'm sorry, I thought it was Miss Zero. Got the same message. And I don't remember who I got when I got the uh, voicemail, which means, uh, as far as I know, cell phone. And I got the same message, and I left a message to that one. I figured may maybe a cell phone that uh, somebody be would be a, a, a I must, might have been, in, I must have been mistaken because uh, the, uh, the superintendent called me back, and I thank you for that. And see who else. Hmm. What can I? I'm trying to think of something else positive. I'll think of that. Well, wait a minute. Ah, I'll I'll save you for the next meeting. I think I ran out of time. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you for your comments. Anyone else, please? Hi, Debbie Rockleman, 189 Alder Avenue, Egg Harbor Township. Happy New Year. Congratulations. Um, I, I have just a couple of things. Lou, thank you. That was one of the things. Thank, just thank you for everything. One of the things that you said was about politics, and that was number one on my list. Um, I predicted every one of your votes ahead of time. What that tells me is there is definitely something wrong when a member of the public can predict every single vote that came out of here tonight okay that means there are politics at play I'm not, you I know you guys think I'm a troublemaker I'm not I have 
this township and this school district, uh, and it's best at my heart, you know, but I have to speak up to what I believe. I think it's very important. We're here for the kids, right? But you're also here for the community. And one thing I've noticed is <coughs> many things have been said to members of this community that are disparaging and are not nice. And I'd like to see that stop for professional reasons, as you guys are all professionals, and I respect all of you. And all of the time, I, I do not know how you guys put the amount of time into this that you do. Uh, I respect you for that. But I would like to see a, a little more professionalism on the part of all of you. Uh, hysterics and drama have no place here. The politics have no place. It's all about the community and the schools and the kids and the parents and the people who live in this community because they pay their taxes. Um, I'd like to ask a question and, and maybe somebody can just get back to me on this. When the committees are meeting, say the curriculum committee, uh, does, a, does the committee consult with specialists or with teachers or department heads and things like that when they're working on making decisions on the kind of curriculum that we have? That's just a question I have out there. The second question I have is regarding the full day kindergarten. Uh, it, it has been brought to my attention just in asking questions that uh, the amount of the grant money that we are receiving for the pre-K, the reason why we are going into having the full time kindergarten is so we can get the grant money, is that the grant money is less than the money we're going to be putting out for full day pre-K, or full day kindergarten. Did I say that right? Okay, the amount of the grant money for the pre-K is less money than we're spending to get the full day kindergarten started. That kind of raises a little question in my mind as far as, you know, budgeting for a household and so forth and so on. How sustainable is our full day kindergarten? How sustain sustainable is the grant money that we have coming in? Is that, do we, are we guaranteed that that's forever? Okay, th those are just some questions. I don't have an opinion one way or another at this point as far as having the full day kindergarten, but I think those are some pretty strong questions that if somebody could get back to me with some answers on that, I'd, I'd like to, okay, I'd like to have answered. So, having said that again, you know, Happy New Year. Thank you all for all of the hard work that you do, all the time that you put into this, and uh, thanks for hearing me. Thank you, Mrs. Rockland. We are going to have Mr. Davis get in touch with you. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Anyone else, please? Good evening. Steve Mazur, 110 Savannah Circle. Um, first of all, thank you all for your service uh, to the board. It's, I know it's, uh, as, a, as a planning board member, I know it's, uh, it's an unpaid job and it's something that you strive to do to give, in your way of giving back to the community. Um, I have a son who's an eighth grader here at Alder, uh, so he's been in the school in the school system here for a number of years. Tonight is the first time I've ever felt that he was not safe in this school. Tonight, he I dropped him off here at 5:15. He's in the National Junior Honor Society. He was stationed here at the front door to open the door for parents who are coming in for uh, parent-teacher conferences. And at 6.15 p.m., or I should say, at 7.15, I just picked him up. I brought him home, and I was so, so angry that I came back. My heart's racing right now because he advised me that at 6.15, a gentleman who's in this room I approached him at the front door of the school. There is no security present anywhere, in the uh, anywhere near the uh, vicinity of the front entrance of the school. He opened the door for the gentleman, and the gentleman proceeded to accost him for more than 10 minutes with a political, uh, far-leaning diatribe uh, that I won't, I won't say w what it was, but he, he costed him with a far-leaning diatribe about politics in general. That's no place for a 14-year-old boy to have to hear in, in where he's supposed to be safe in his school. And I, I'm, I, as a, just a suggestion, that maybe on the night of a board meeting that, that, that events aren't scheduled at the school, at this particular school where the boardroom is, 
uh, such as parent-teacher conference where students are being asked to volunteer their time to come and help with the event. The, the students here are helping direct parents to their to classrooms and in this case my son was stationed at the front door. He tells me he didn't feel unsafe but I felt that he's unsafe and there was no security there. Another student had to go and find a staff member to, uh, to come and call him away from the door. Uh, he didn't feel like he could just run away. There was no, but again, there was no security there. I don't understand how uh, a mem any member of the public could have just walked into the school right there with no security for the students that were at the front door. Thank you. Can I say something to Mr. Yes. Um, I, my daughter was also part of this, and um, I 100% agree with you, and I was very upset that the students had to witness all of this and be a part of this, and there was cursing, and I also asked for if there was security in the building, um, and I was told that there was not. So as, as a parent, as a board member, this is unacceptable. Got it. Let's, let's, Can I speak again? Let's let our administration take a look. Yes, I was going to say I do not disagree with, with any statements made. Um, I myself made a comment when I walked in um, that this usually does not happen, that we have a board meeting the same night of a, an event at the school. It's something that we do have to revisit um, because calendars have to be uh, coordinated. So an overall apology there. Um, as for the security and what time they were put on, we will check with the security director and see what the schedules were uh, for this evening. But um, I take full responsibility and make sure that um, we will not have double bookings, if you will. Thank you. Can I speak again? Well, first, I, I want to see two things first. Go ahead. Um, I think that as a board, we need to look into maybe establishing policy that protects our students from people who come to board meetings um, and making sure, number one, that our students are not put in that position again by an adult. Agree. Agree. First, I want to see, is there anyone else who hasn't spoken that wants to come up then? We'll hear from Mr. Mason. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken? No, you, you c come on up, sir, and, and then once everyone's had a turn, then Mr. Mason can okay. Sorry. Go, go a second time, sure. How you doing? Uh, I don't know who um, I kind of addressed this to. A question is about the bus policies and how the busing Name work. Name address, please, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm sorry. Paul Sprano, 9 Fairfax Road, Egg Harbor Township. Okay, so uh, back to the policy of buses and how they're handled. Um, is that the Board of Education, the superintendent, or I don't know, Mr. Santelli, or who handles that? If I'm directing this to, I'm looking for kind of an answer. Um, they explained to me. Um, my son currently uh, goes to uh, Holy Spirit freshman. I have two younger ones, um, and he, his mother and I live at separate homes in Egg Harbor Township. We're both joint custodial parents, and um, what they told me at the bus uh, place that he's not allowed to uh, ride the bus or get on the bus at my near my house because it has to be five days a week. Um, and the policy is there is for um, babysitters. Um, now my, my question to you is, is the way the policy is written and the way it handles is it's more like you're um, shunning or you're taking away one of the parent because he doesn't or she doesn't have the majority or uh, an equal 50 percent of the time. It's not like a, a child is being sent to uh, um, a babysitter, uh, an aunt, uncle, whatever. Th this is a joint custodial parent in the township um, who pays taxes in the township, who grew up in the township, who volunteers in the township. Um, I went through different avenues. I went through the school. I went through the bus uh, uh, office. I've called them, talked to them a couple times. Um, I was kind of dismissive by the person on the phone and said that, uh, you know, this rule is for babysitters. And I said, well, I am a joint custodial parent. Or no, she said it's for, uh, and joint custodial parents. And I said, well, I am a joint custodial parent. 
And I says, it says in the paperwork, and uh, you can uh, get that from the school's uh, uh, office and records. And um, she said, well, unless it's five days a week, I said, well, no, we split the week. And, um, and she said, well, no. And I said, so, well, what you're doing is you're taking away uh, one of the uh, custodial parents' uh, privilege of being a parent. Mm -hmm and saying that he can't use that, even though you're paying the taxes in this town. To me, that seems like a common sense kind of logic behind it, where you're saying, I had to drive an extra five miles when there was a bus stop. I live off Riga, and there's a bus stop right there at uh, uh, Catherine Drexel. But I had to drive all the way down the road to the Black Horse Pike down by uh, Bob's Garden Market to make him catch a bus there, and then drive all the way back. I mean, and the bus is barely half full at Catherine St. Drexel. It, it, it doesn't, it, like I said, it doesn't make sense. It's not a babysitter. It's not some stranger. It's not some daycare office. It's, it's, um, it, it, it's a custodial parent who has rights so as I, a parent. I, I, I heard and understood. So we're, we're going to have uh, so what they, Chandra is going to uh, can you explain get to me, in touch with you. Yes, this question. Is that the policy? I will say we can follow up privately, but I do know for education purposes, even with joint custody, there is one residence for education as a primary. But we can go over that off the topic. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was it. Is there anyone else b b before? Um Do I uh, need to uh, repeat my address or no? Okay. I want to apologize, but I uh, was kind of angry. I must have uh, uh, misunderstood uh, the school board uh, superintendent when she uh, told me the uh, meet special meeting uh, started at 6 p.m. Uh, uh, then the students probably I wouldn't have been so angry and uh, and and I I didn't feel that this, this child I I usually can uh, judge people how they feel he didn't uh, feel threatened and I'm sorry I was trying to educate him about the real world and uh, you know tell tell him the uh, truth and I thought he was old enough to understand that and he, he seemed to and I want to uh, apologize to his father for uh, him thinking I would ever hurt or threaten anybody I've never done that I never told, told anybody I was going to bring a gun in or any of that kind of nonsense and uh, well I, mean, I guess it's not nonsense you just never know I mean look at them poor kids in uh, Orlando I know, I'm sorry, uh, Florida, I mean, the FBI knew, uh, local police knew, they, uh, seemed like everybody knew, and all they had to do was uh, call Code Red, and the school would have been locked down. Nobody would have got killed except maybe the, that, uh, what they call him, crazy kid or something, whatever they called him. And uh, sick, and I think so. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. When I get so angry, when people, you can just keep walking all over, keep lying to me. I'm not saying anybody here did that. I just can't take it after a while. I just lose it, and it makes it, me so stressful. Hard to believe that I'm see so. I'm. I always, even though I'm not cool, calm, and collect, this still makes me angry, and I want to apologize to everybody, and I'm sorry that I, I wouldn't even have said anything if I knew politics were being taken out, and people could actually uh, honestly come up here and speak, and I, thanks a lot. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Mason. Is there is there anyone else? Sure. Debbie Rockleman, 189 Alder Avenue, speaking of safety. Does anybody have an in with the electric company? That entrance and that entrance are so, so, so dark. Driving out and driving in when it's dark outside, it's really scary. There used to be lights there, um, you know, street lights. 
they're not there anymore. And it's very dark. I don't know if anybody else does, but I drive by them all the time trying to get here. So just a thought, because I think it's a, safe, a good safety thing to think about, because nighttime, you know, that's all. Thanks. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Anyone else? Anyone else, please? Over here. Sorry. Um, I wanted to piggyback on what Ms. Rockleman said because I think we have discussed this before that our buildings are dark at all times of the night. And while that may be a cost savings, the risk is outweighing those cost savings. Our, someone could fall, someone could be hiding, someone can get hurt. We need to find that money and get these buildings lit, in my opinion. And I think that needs to be part of our budget. Well, yeah, I want to agree with you on that. And, you know, I think we have to, you know, make sure we're talking, so we're talking about the same things. I mean, there's, there's only so much we can do about what goes on off of our campus, but we have had the conversation about a baseline of safety lighting at all times, and especially during busy times at, at the buildings. We have talked ab about that before. Mr. So President, we're need can to I make, make sure a comment? That happens. When sure. Okay. Uh, I just had a question in regards to timers. Maybe somebody could address that. It might be just a timer issue because of the daylight savings time. Um, I had heard that before. Maybe we just need to take another look at the um, way the timers are set. Is that a possibility? Thank you. Sure, go ahead. At this time, basic, it's a combination of timers that have to be adjusted. As But this area parking lot, we've heard for a few years now how dark it is. The lines are underground. And every time we bring it up during budget, it gets cut. I'm really hoping we talk to our facilities director this year. We have to. It's, it's getting worse. And the more that lights go out, we really can't get to them because everything's underground. So it is in our budget proposal um, that was submitted before break. Um, but some of them are just timing. Oh, lights, timers, we just have to verify. Anyone else? One last time. One more once. Yeah, that, well, I just want to, well, you know, I, I think you would know, is, is she referring to that light that's been broke for, I can't even remember how long. And I understand, maybe, uh, what kind of nice, uh, could we think we could uh, get a GoFundMe page, and then we can get that fixed, and the clock that's been ro uh, broke for uh, in the tower, what's it say, 715 twice a day? I mean, I can always say it's right twice a day. And I understood that that, that uh, light out there uh, can't afford to fix it. In, in other words, it's somebody would have to locate it and, and find the wire, whereas uh, broken or something. I used to do that stuff for the telephone company and usually it was obvious where the silver line crossed, I think I was told it was, where the two areas meet is generally uh, where the trouble is. That's what I found with, with a hit phone cable, like when somebody put in a gas line or a water line or a sewer line and they, they accidentally forgot they hit it and, you know, them things happen. and. Uh, and I, I really mean a GoFundMe page. But I know there's, there's no way with your tight budgets and stuff that you can afford to fix it. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Is there any board members? Any members of our administration? So we will uh, look to adjourn. Uh, we are going to have our retreat next Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the high school. We'll have notification go out on that. Uh, committees and roster list will go out. I want to thank everyone for coming this evening. Wish everyone a very happy, healthy, and safe New Year. Uh, and be careful going home tonight. Let's hope we don't get snow. May I have a motion? We stand adjourned. Thank you.